Okay, I am here today with my beautiful assistants. <laughs> He's filming, Maria. <laughs> Feel like the price is right. I got yeah. these two beautiful assistants with me. Glad I combed my hair this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a little calibration video on the GX525 Gendex Dell generator. So we got the front cover flipped open already. Go over some of the components. MA rotor board, which is where are we at? Right here. Yeah. That's the board we're going to be interested in. It has to go up on the extender. Okay? Got that? We know that. <clears throat> These are your filament drives. All right? This is your power and, supply. Yeah, and if you look at this Molex plug, if we ever have a problem with MA calibrating or, you know, MA faults, <clears throat> you can put your voltmeter on there and check AC volts. And it's somewhere... It says in the book it's like plus and minus 40 volts or something like that. And then these invert the plus and minus 40 volts. So you can measure all that at this Molex plug when you're troubleshooting it. Those are Darlington's, right? Yes. Yes, they are. And then R7, that's the actual resistor that we're going to check our MA on. These two diodes back here, D4 and D5, if you look, they're right there. Those are actually connected to your high tension tank, and that's where you can actually look at anode and cathode KV. This bus back here is your ground bus. So anytime you're checking the test point, you can use that for ground. It's, the book tells you about all this. It's all in there. Okay? So <clears throat> your inverters are up here. you got four SCRs. Your DC rail is right there. Your bridge rectifier, three phase rectifier, your three sets of diodes. And you can see it just comes in there, goes down through the relay. Okay. Right now, this one's hooked up for single phase, so you only have two. See that? Yeah. All right. To hook the center one up, this will work on three phase or single phase. The exactly. CPIs do that too. So yeah. does the GTRs. They all do that now. GTR does now? Mm -hmm. They didn't. Yeah, they do. The, the smaller ones do. Okay. So, the, like the P300s and P400s. Anything above that, though, is three phase only. This is an important relay right here. As you're switching through um, high, medium, and low power, because this is an ISO watt generator, it doesn't have MA stations. This high is full. that's that's full and half power right Correct. there. All right, and then. That's the DC rail, 60 amp, amp. 60 amp fuse. That'll blow if you. That's normal. Sometimes it pops. That happened uh, once in a great while. Mm -hmm. It'll happen. So let's get everything hooked up, and then we'll go to the scope and come back here. It's gonna actually. Well, no, it's not. All right. So, scope instructions. First thing you want to notice is it tells you where to connect it here. R7. We pointed to that on the I/O board. And this is the stuff that pertains to your scope, okay? Your scale is going to be 2 volts equals 100 MA. Now that's going to be important here in a minute. They want your scope set to be 2 volts per division or per graticule, all right? Let's wait a second before we do that. We're just going to look first. And then our time base is 10 milliseconds per graticule, all right? Single sweep, we'll talk about that. I don't, we're not going to set single sweep, okay? We don't, we're not going to need to. This scope's good enough that it doesn't need that. We'll talk about what is that is. Is this what that minute. is or not? I was trying yes. to think about yes, that. Yes, it okay. is. And storage, okay? So the old scopes had storage, non storage. These ones are digital, they're different than the okay. old scope. This book's written as if you had an old Tektronix 2220. Gotcha, or that big whatever. blue hunk of. Right, those are actually like fantastic scopes. Number, yeah. So, if we get over to here, all right, so the first thing it asks for is two volts per division. Which so is, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna adjust, we're on channel one, 
this is just the single channel test we're going to do, so we only need to use channel one. This is your volts, which is vertical. Vertical is volts. So we're adjusting the scaling for this for this right here. Okay. So what's the first thing I'm doing? doing there? I'm gonna move this. That's trigger. I'll get into that in a minute. Okay. All right. So first thing we're looking at is we want two volts per division, and we are set right now to 2.00 volts per division. All right. Now the other thing you got to make sure is I always run my probe on times 10. As you notice right now it's set to times 1. Okay, so if you do not have an automatic probe or a times 10 only probe, make sure your probe's on times 10. Then you have to tell the machine what kind of that you have a times 10 probe. So under the probe menu, okay, so menu off. We're going to turn the menu on. Right here, we want to change it. So we're going to hit that. And we're going to set it to times 10. Okay. Pretty much you keep your probe on times 10 all the time? I do. Okay. I do. The only time you're ever going to use times 1 is if you're looking at something that's ultra low voltage and that you don't have to have a super high impedance. Gotcha. Okay. But typically, you do not want to use times 1. All right. Coupling. Now, let's talk about that a little bit. Your coupling, okay, this is the input coupling that we're talking about right now. So that means what component of a signal do you want to look at? Do you want to look at the DC component with reference to ground? Or do you want to look at the AC component? And ground, you can do that that just makes your trace be grounded, okay? So if you have your scope hooked up to something and there's some spurious noise in the background, it'll just give you a flat signal so that you can adjust your trace. Do right? we ever use ground? I mean, that usually <coughs> don't happen, right? What we're right. doing for a test, there's, yeah, it's it, possible to do it. Right. So you're either going to measure an AC signal or a DC right. signal. So we're going to set it to DC, okay? Bandwidth limit, you'll never have to touch that for what you do, okay? What is, just so I know. What that does is you can, this is a 100 megahertz oscilloscope. Okay. And if you hit bandwidth limit, you can actually limit that bandwidth. If you're getting a lot of noise and so forth, you can make the scope less sensitive to that stuff by changing, you know, to a lower bandwidth. Leave alone, right? Leave bandwidth alone. limit? Mm -hmm. Leave off. Okay. On this scope, you have the choice of having coarse or fine adjustment <clears throat> for your volts per division. All that means is when I turn this little knob here, how much do I want this to move? See, right now, each little click of the knob <clears throat> moves it, it like one. The volts. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if I go to fine adjustment, I can make it 2.5 volts per division. I can All change, that. like my volts per division, I can adjust it more. Okay. The whole purpose of this, this volts per division thing, the whole purpose of this is I want whatever signal is going to be coming into this, you want it to <clears throat> I want it to be taking up a good portion of my screen. If, if I set it, this will work if I set it to 5 volts per division, it's just that my waveform will be this little scrunched down thing and it will be hard to measure. So I want this to scale up so that it uses most of my scale but doesn't exceed it. Okay, this book cheats it, gives you a little cheat because it tells you what it, what you're going to need to have. But you start to learn after a while. If you're looking at a certain voltage level, you know how many volts per division you want. You're going to find out if you know two volts is 100 ma. You're going to find out that for the low ma stations, this is going to be wrong because. That means 100 MA will only be one graticule. So yeah. we're going to change this as we move along. All right. Now we want to move our trace. And if you look here, number one, that's trace number one for channel, channel one. one. So we're going to move it and we're going to adjust it until we're down here 
to the next to the last radicule. Okay, you can set it to the bottom, but I kind of like to see where I'm at, you know what I mean? So we're going to just move our trace to the bottom graticule, or next to the bottom graticule. You'll see on here, right here, is a little letter T. Mm -hmm. Now this is something new to newer oscilloscopes. The old scopes didn't have programmable triggers like this. But this actually is how you can set how high does that voltage have to get before the scope will turn on and trigger. Okay. So you, the idea is you want the trigger to be set above the noise floor. Your noise floor is the noise that's sitting in the background so it doesn't false trigger, but low enough that it'll trigger at the beginning of your actual waveform. So if you start getting false triggers, you can move your trigger up a little bit. I so, can, can you turn it off too, or you have to have trigger on? Or is this off right now, there is no trigger. It's on free run. Okay. okay. So that's our next thing we have to set. Okay. We'll get to that here in a second. Now the next thing we want to set is our time. Okay. It's set right now to 500 microseconds. So each division equals 500 microseconds. They want 10 milliseconds. So we're going to take that and go to 10 milliseconds per division. And as you notice, as I change that, my time marker moves. Would we use a set See time? See the time marker? Would you use the set time? The this T, this T stands for, for time and it also stands for trigger point. I got that. So when the scope triggers, this line is where the very beginning of your waveform will start to show on the screen. So right now I'm cutting out half of my screen. So I want to take my horizontal adjustment and I want to move it until once again I like my time right here. Okay, does that make sense? Good? All right. Now then, I can turn off my menu so I can see my whole screen. Now we're done with that. And we're going to come over here and we're going to set our trigger. This is the most important part. Okay. So the first thing you do is turn on your trigger menu. Now Dave, your scope is going to be similar to this. Yeah. They're very close. They have the same functions pretty much. And as you can see, another menu pops up. Let's go down the list what this means. Type of triggering. What do you, type means what do you want the thing to look for to, to trigger off of? Well, I want to trigger off of an edge. What an edge means is any time the voltage on the tip of this probe okay, changes, it's, it's going to deflect one way or the other. That's called an edge. So it will only trigger when it sees a change. All right. You can also set it to be on a pulse. So when it sees a little blip, trigger then. You could trigger video. It will actually look for the sync pulses of a video composite signal. Okay. You also have a slope whenever it sees a slope. Okay. And then alternative, you can actually create your own trigger menu. We're not going to mess with that. 99.9 .9 times out of 100, it's on edge. Okay. There are times that you may want it to trigger off of something different, but we're, you're never going to see that. Okay, so let's move our move our trace back down. Okay. So we're on channel one, so that's what we're using. Your source. I want it to trigger off of channel one. If I set this to channel 2, it's going to wait for something on this port before it will trigger, so it will never trigger. Okay. okay. If I'm looking at two traces at once, like I'm looking at KV and MA, and I have the KV on this one and the MA on this one, I can actually make it trigger off of one or the other by saying which channel is the trigger channel. Okay. Slope. Now, if I'm triggering off of an edge, okay, there's a rising edge and a falling edge to a waveform. Okay? 
the arrow pointing up means I want it to trigger off of the rising edge. If this gets set to falling edge, okay, mm -hmm. it won't trigger until the end of the signal. Okay. Okay. What's that mean? That no, means trigger on everything. Back. You could could you actually leave trigger on, on no because it'll trigger. And then the waveform will end and it'll trigger again and wipe it oh, out. Gotcha. So you don't want that. So slope you want? Rising slope. Rising slope. Right. That's what that means. Now this That's last one. That's 99% of the time <clears throat> also, right? Yep. This last one is the absolute most important. Okay. Right now, is auto means, they used to call this roll mode or scroll mode. Auto. Different scopes call it different things. But what automatic trigger means is... I'm going to just trigger over and over and over and over and over again and never stop triggering. Okay? In this mode, it's only going to use the trigger to lock onto a waveform to make it look stable on the middle of the screen. Okay? But it's not going to, if you're just looking at something that's here today, gone tomorrow, just a pulse, it's not going to capture it. It'll, it'll pop it up on the screen real quick and then disappear. I got you. Okay? Because it'll just paint right over top of it. So we want this set to normal trigger. Okay, they're saying single trigger. The difference between normal and normal and single both do the same thing. They wait for a signal before they trigger. This is what we will keep it on a lot of times too. Normal. Okay. Single sweep means trigger and then if another pulse comes later, don't trigger. Just hold it until I push the single button again to rearm it. Gotcha. So you have to arm it each time it triggers. Okay. Now, sometimes you have to do this if there's a lot of noise. Sometimes the rotor circuit or something will make noise and it'll make the thing trigger over top of itself and it'll wipe out your waveform gotcha. before you can see it. That's when you go to normal or to single. But n normally if you set your you know, your trigger level into the right place, if you set your uh, noise, you know, noise cancel or whatever they call it. Go over it. Let's see, coupling. Here's your coupling. As long as your coupling's set properly, this should run on normal and not false trigger. So don't confuse trigger coupling to input coupling. Does, okay. that, does that have to be changed? Yes. Sometimes you will use okay. this is the coupling you will change. What's that coupling? For? What's the difference All between? Right. If I hit this button right now, there are four different couplings that you have. Different scopes. Some scopes have more than those. Mm -hmm. Yours has four. DC is the typical one that you'll trigger off of. Okay. Anytime it sees a change in DC level, mm -hmm. trigger. Okay. AC means only trigger when there is activity. Don't trigger when there's not activity. Okay little different okay okay question if I'm reading an AC circuit I'd have to change that right you'd leave it on DC it'll still trigger okay yep. okay so it's uh it has to do with with capturing pulses so basically things. that should stay the same that's it, thing. you're gonna use DC okay. high frequency and low frequency reject okay high frequency HF and LF reject what those will do is let's say you're looking at something that's a high frequency and a low frequency at the same time because your actual waveform is in the millisecond so it's technically low frequency as far as radio is concerned RF okay but the inverters are running at RF so you have but the 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 waveform you're looking for is low frequency so if you put HF reject, it's still going to show the high frequency pulses up there. It just means that don't trigger when you hear noise. A lot of times relays give off noise. Yeah. And that HF or LF reject will keep the thing from false triggering on you. So like what will happen is you'll hit prep and the thing triggers on prep because it picks up the noise from your rotor circuit. Then you hit expose and it triggers again, and wipes that noise out, puts it on your waveform you're looking for. Then when the relay drops out from the safety contactor, it triggers a third time and wipes out your signal again. Okay. Noise reject will get rid of it. 
there is no rule for high frequency. You don't know if it's HF or LF that's false triggering. You just try it. If it doesn't trigger, you try HF. If it doesn't trigger again, try LF reject. Okay? So that's what those are for. Hold off, you're not going to use because that, again, that's something that if you're looking at like video or something like that, hold off means when you see the trigger, wait and then trigger. So in other words, don't trigger when the trigger pulse comes, trigger after the trigger pulse comes. Normally that's just set to zero. See, don't, it waits 100 nanoseconds. That's minimum that it can trigger off of. Okay? So right now, for the most part, your scope is set to at least try and see if we can catch Trigger it. it yeah. Okay, so let's get it hooked up and then we'll come back, all right? Okay, so we got our ready signal on the scope. As you can see, it says ready. It's ready to trigger. Everything's set the way Two, the book says now. 10 MS. Right. So the trigger's here. You we're hooked up to the so. R7, all right? And we're ready to take an exposure here. Let's go over to the generator and do it. All right, so here's the technique they, that the book wants, right? Correct. All right. So we're going to go and let's make an exposure here and let's see what the scope does out there. You can catch it. There it is. Jesus. All right. So we have a we have a waveform. Actually, not bad. And let's look at it. This is what the book wants. And if you see, right there was a spit. What's that from, Tony? Okay. What you... Tube spit. What's that mean? A little mean? bit of a tube spit. Tube's not warmed up, probably. It, it'll go away. Now, that is, a, that is a spike. See how it's right here? It's ramping down. Okay. You see that? Now, that means your MA is too high. Remember, this is the part that you're concerned with right here. You are not concerned with the level. I mean, the level is always going to be on. MA stabilizer is dragging it down. So we're concerned about the level and the yes. fall? Yes. Not even the fall? And if I move this over here, so we have a bigger screen, so we can actually take advantage of this a little bit. There's your waveform, okay? So what we want to do here is we want this to kind of loop up into here. We don't want it to spike over and then come down. It's not terrible, but it is a little bit high. Now that little that little don't worry about pip that. at the beginning, that's usually coming from the cable capacitance of your high tension cables and stuff. That's normal. <clears throat> they, they all do that. Question for me is I'm looking at the proper waveform. This is an over exaggerated. Okay. So this drawing. could be leaned out. Yes. But it don't have to be straight. It can be lean. We're looking for when it starts here. Yes. In other words, so want I want peaks. if I took if I took an engineering square and I held it on there, it should be totally square. Or I prefer if anything have it ramp up a little bit into at that first pulse. You want that ramp first up pulse more? is what we care about right now. And this is actually not unsafely out of calibration. No, I would think. But it is the your preheat is high. Okay. That's what that is. So we got to count this. Okay. Right. So now you got to measure. So how do we count it? Okay. How many volts per division did we Two set? Two volts. To? So what does that mean? So each little square is, is how many? Two. Okay. So we got. And if you notice the little dots, how many dots are in each one, square? One, two, three, four. There's four dots. So there's five actual position marks between each. So each dot is a fifth of each square. Okay? I would say this is shooting 12, roughly. So you've got... We, we had 10 sets. So you've got 2 volts, 4 volts, right? 2 volts, 4 volts, and about 2 more clicks, which is 4 volts per, per dot, or 0.4 volts per dot. So it's about 2.8 volts vertical is what we're reading. Okay. 
And if 1 volt equals 100 MA, 2.4 volts equals 240 MA, right? You see how that works? Yeah. If I have 240 MA and I have, let's start, let's move this over till it's at the beginning. Okay, here's the beginning of my waveform. And I'm going to turn this down so we can read it better. There's my waveform right there. Okay. If I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A little bit, little bit under, about eight and a half. Right there is where it starts to go down. See it? Eight and a half, eight point five times five. Yeah, forty. Right? So it'd be about forty-four. Yeah. Right? So you have 44 milliseconds at how many MA did I say it was? 240? 240. So 240 times 8 milliseconds? What's, what's 240 times what? 80, I said 80 milliseconds, right? Mm -hmm. So 240 times point 0080, right? Oh, milliseconds. Yeah. 0.008. Actually, 08. 0 .08 I'm sorry. 0 0.08 equals 192 mass. Now, what did we have selected out there? 10. Are we doing something wrong here? So, according to this, you had 40, I'm sorry, we counted wrong, 42 milliseconds. So, 42 milliseconds, 0.042 times 240. 10.8. 10.8, 0.08 mass, okay? So, it's real close. So, let's see, let's check our time scale again. We got 5... 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, about 45 roughly is what we're seeing. It said 42 milliseconds. We counted wrong at the beginning. So you took, let's review this a second. So your MA times time equals your mass, right? Yes. So we know two things right now. We know that our mass is correct, and we know that our preheats are a wee little bit high. Can this stop a second? Let me, I want to do some. So MA. All right, so we're going to adjust R72, our preheat, for our large spot to get our waveform. Half a turn, you say? Go half a turn. There okay. you go. And we've switched scopes. We're yeah. using a different scope, just for proof of concept. All right, let's take our shot um, and see what we get. So let's see what we get. All right, and look what happened to our waveform. You don't have that big peak at the beginning. You like it? Yeah, that's beautiful. So we're good. Very nice. That's perfect waveform. So we took our 72 counterclockwise mm -hmm. for half a turn. Half yep. A turn. Okay. You probably could have got away with a quarter of a turn, but that's good right there. As the filament ages, that'll flatten out even better. So that's a good thing. This is uh, make exposures R62 mm -hmm. level set on the MA card for stabilizing MA level. Right, so you're adjusting your MA stabilizers. Now you're adjusting this part, which you probably do not need that because if you look right now, it good. it's pretty good. I mean, if you look here, two, four, and about half would be five volts. You're real close to that five volts. All right, you're within a couple of MA. I wouldn't even touch it. Okay. All right. Now we need and to you're, do... That's typical. This usually never changes, this one down here. Okay. The, it, it's the preheats that change because as a tube ages, your filament changes, oh, yeah. and your preheat goes off. But the level, that's a one-time... I mean, even if you put a brand new tube in there, it'll probably be, you won't even have to touch it then. 
Okay, so now we're going to do small, small spot. Not. Okay, I would have changed my scaling a little bit. Because now we're... Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? But if you look, that's pretty good. It's got a wee little bit. See how it, it's trying to compensate too fast, so it like so undershoots a little bit? So it's overshoot, then undershoot, then levels out. You like that? We should probably take about a quarter of a turn off of that one. That same one, or is that 62. 62? This is 62. Okay. Okay. So, quarter of a turn, counterclockwise. You say 62. 62. Okay. Yeah, that one's... That is weird how they have some pots stick up and some of them stick out sideways. Okay. Quarter of turn. All right. See what that does. All right. Okay. Let's see what kind of waveform we have now. You got that little slope, but right now still there. got a little bit. We could still probably touch it up a little bit. Let's go a little more. How much you turn, Dave? Sometimes Quarter. it's the opposite of what you think. It's the long blue pot yep. on the bottom right side of the board. Yep. So just give that another tweak, and we'll take another shot. And we'll be right back. Okay, so finished product. There we go. Not yet. So we got a flat waveform. We got our nice coming into our beginning. Preheat like for small our small power, focus. Full power, 100 kV. Now we're going to do high power. Select small spot. Small spot. Full power. Full power. 100 kV. 10 mass. 10 mass and adjust R63 63 again. That's necessary. So if you notice, they actually have you adjusting 63 twice mm -hmm. for two different set points. Set what points. they're going to have you do is split the difference, just like I was telling you guys mm -hmm. earlier. So we're now going to adjust this. Hopefully, it should be pretty so close. The small is going to be hot. Might be. And the other one is going to be low. Right? Yep. And at full power, we may need to change our scaling a little bit because we may go off scale on our scope. So let's take a shot. Would you change on that? The scale. I went from half a volt per division to one volt per division. So we're at 50 MA per block. So we add 60 milliseconds. And look what our preheat's doing now. Wow. See there? It's a little bit undershoot. And then that's an overshoot because it was so far under. So we, gotta... so we may end up on the low power having a little bit of overshoot. Now these little things ignore that. That's noise. That is overshoot a little bit. See, it's, it started out too low. So then it, the MA stabilizer kicked in right about here and it tried to compensate. It overcompensated, then it drug back down and leveled it. That's what happens on these. Okay? So we're counting this up, so what we so, actually get. So again, well right now we're just worried about preheat okay. for the moment. So let's, let's take that R63, which is your preheat Let me read again. again, make sure. R63. R63, and we want to just go up just a little bit on R63 to kind of flatten that and we may get a teeny little bit of overshoot on the low power. The hell's R63 at? But I'd rather have overshoot under, on... Hmm? Under that R72. Yes, that yellow one right there. We so want it up. that a shot, yep. So we're going to tweak that, take another shot, come back. All right. Didn't make a huge difference. Still got a little bit of undershoot there. So, 
Well, here's the weird thing is we're going to go a little more, and if it doesn't get any better, we've got to go the opposite direction because this might be the beginning of the pulse, and it might be trying to bring Over it down. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Looking shoot. at MA stabilizers messes with you. So it goes up too high, too low, and it goes up too yeah, high. Yeah, that's why it's better the old ones that you could turn that off. You can't shut it off on this generator. Could you jumper it out on the board? Nope. It's just part of the circuit. So let's take another shot. Much better. It's a little bit high now, just a hair high. Let me bring it down a hair. Just a hair. But you can see how that leveled I off a lot better. I turned it quite a bit. So you just got to go, just the teeniest little tweak, and it should uh, flatten you out. Now we're splitting hairs. We normally wouldn't split hairs as much, but since this is educational, we're going to try to. It's very good educational. Yeah. That's what I need it. All right. Okay, look at our preheat. That's as perfect as you'll ever get it. Fine job, yeah. That's not bad. I'll tell my wife. Okay. Okay, so what's next? All right. So select large spot, full power. Mm -hmm. Verify wave. So you're basically square. doing the same thing. At R72. And this is a verification. If you notice, you're just touching the one that you started out with. Yeah. Just right here, that R72, you're splitting. If this is not that far out, we're not touching it. Okay, so we're just going to shoot a large focus. And again, we have to re go back and change our scale again two. to 2 volts. Yep, so now we're back to 100 milliamps per division, 100 MA per change division. Change the scope? Yep. So go ahead and shoot it. Okay. And you can see this one's just coming up a little bit. See it? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of undershoot. So you got a little bit of a camel hump there. So bring it up a hair. You can bring it up a tiny bit, but understand that the other one you just, the first calibration you did will be a little bit affected by it. It'll be a little overshoot. But you wouldn't worry about it though. No. So it's, leave it alone? If anything on the high power ones, I prefer it to be a little tiny undershoot because as the tube ages, yeah, that'll know. fall into place and flatten out. Okay, and you just, you don't want it to be a big bump. If you have a big camel Real hump on there, hump. you would definitely have to adjust it. But that, I would probably leave it. Okay. And what is this tube? Is this a Rad Twenty One? That's a big tube on this little room. So, okay. There you have it. Now the KV. You can use your thin X for this if yes, you want. Yes. But if you want to just practice with your scope, as I showed you at the beginning here, D5 and D4, you can actually go ahead and look. Two volts per division, 10 milliseconds. Same thing, Tony. Mm -hmm. And the way they're doing it is they're having you do the add to invert channel B and then add the two. Basically, what you're doing is it's in differential mode where you're using two channels. You can also do what we call butterfly the waveform, and you can look at the KV going up, the anode KV going up, and the cathode KV going negative, in which case we would put our trace in the middle of the screen, and you would see anode go up from the middle, and you'd see cathode go down from the middle. So it looks like butterfly wings. That's what we call it, butterflying the waveform. Okay? If you want to do that. Now, this, this is going to be a little different now. We're now going to be doing a dual trace waveform, okay? So, and the other thing is, it's a little more complicated because one channel is going to sh show a positive going waveform and the other is going to show a negative. So, we want our reference to be in the center of the screen so that we can see our one channel going up and our other channel going down. Reference being triggered? No, our reference being zero volts okay. with no signal. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, I purposely put this first channel on the anode because anode is positive going voltage with re with respect to this to the ground. Okay, so 
our trigger is still going to trigger off of a positive going slope because MA or uh, anode is positive going. So we're going to move channel one to the center graticule. All right. Okay. Just like this. Okay. We're then going to turn on channel two and we're going to check our settings. The first thing I see is our probe, probe is set. Probe. So we got to make him times 10. We want DC coupling. Yep. Invert off. Okay. That's done. And already you can see channel 2 is already set to the middle. See, it's kind of superimposed over channel 1. All right. So what's going to happen is we're going to take a shot. And we don't know how many volts is how many kV. Does it say? Okay. Let's look. Right here, they're saying one volt. If you look here, 80 kV equals 8 volts. So one volt so equals 10 kV. Does it matter if it's on a to say. dynalyzer or a scope? It don't matter. That would be the same? Right. Okay. So, we're basically just going to look. But it's the same. Same, same as millisecond the, as mm -hmm. the other one. Mm -hmm. Volts per division. Yes. Now, they're just doing adding A and B so that you just see one waveform like this going up to 8 volts. We're doing it there. We're doing it so out. we can see Your butterfly. And right. Butterfly and means it should Why? Because we want to check edge. the transformer balance and make sure that... Basically, when you look inside this high-tension tank, you have two windings in there, one for your anode side, one for your cathode side. So when you're selecting 80 kV, you're really not selecting 80 kV. You're selecting 40 kV on yes. two different windings, and the windings are opposite. Because you're just getting the top. Right. So the difference between the positive going 40 and negative going 40 with reference to ground is 80 kV peak to peak. That's what kVP stands for, kV peak to peak. Okay. Now, why do they do that? If I measure from this high tension cable, this high voltage cable, with reference to the chassis ground, the highest potential I could ever see is half of the maximum KV. Yes. So, 62 and a half, which would be 125 KV. Why? Well, could you imagine how big this cable has to be? Look how big it is already just to carry the 60 KV. Yeah. What would it be if I had to get the whole 120? The other thing is, the higher the potential you get, the more likely that of an arc getting outside of this cable. Okay. Okay. So it's safer this way. All right. You never see the full KV of the machine except for in the tube in between anode and cathode. All right. So that's why we're doing that. So we're all set up here. I would say, okay, there's still a problem. If we look. You have to set your volts per division also on channel 2, because they're individually set. 2. Okay. So if 1 volt equals 10 kV, this, we're at 20 kV per division right now. What about your time? Okay. You have to set that 2 on that? No. It's How same. long of an exposure are we going to do? Time's the same. 10 we'll milliseconds. Okay. Okay. 80 kV, 50 mass. Large focus. Full power. Large focus, full power. So let's go take set that up. All right, so full power, 80 kV, large focus, 50 mass. Did you hear that big click? That's it. That's it. Power. High, low power. Yep. Okay, hit your prep. Make your exposure. We're good? Yep. Large focus. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. All right, what do we have? Close. Now. As you see, that's our butterfly waveform. And go ahead. It looks like to me this could drop lower than this. It's just a hair. It looks out a hair. Is it or not? Not really. There if you look if you again, I centered this a little tiny oh, bit above. Okay. That's how again you can you really gotta watch your okay. centering and so forth. So alright, so let's let's 
count. Now, what's our scale again? It says 1 80. volt equals how many kV? If 80 volts, if 8 volts is 80 kV, then 1 volt would be 8. 10 kV. Yeah, 10. 10 kV. So, yeah. if so 1 got... volt is 10 kV, I'm at 2 volts per block, yeah. then that would be, 2 volts would be 20 kV. So I'm at 20 kV per graticule. So we go from the center. So 40. if I go from the center, 20, 40. So my anode is 40. 20, 40 negative, so my cathode is 40, 40 and 40, 80 kV, so I got 20, 40, 60, 80 kV. Or as you say, if and you we subtract have, them, that gets a zero. Yep, so what do we have selected? 80, 80. kV. So you're spot on. You're spot on. And you'll find out that that's a function of the inverter circuit in here, so usually you set that and forget that. So it's not It'll a... never change. Cool. Okay. The only time you can get into trouble with that is if you change the x-ray tube type. If you put a different model of x-ray tube that has a different anode cathode spacing and all that, now, then that would change a little bit. You may have to adjust your inverters. Now, okay. CPI, can yes. I do it with that? The CPI does have that. Because the problems we ran into with MXR mm -hmm. is the guy's not selecting the tube. Can right. this test tell me if the tube is damaged? Well, yeah. A little, you well, know, here's you know the saying? thing. Let's look at this a little bit. First of all, this is just noise yeah, and it's picking it up, okay? Th those Ignore those weird looking lines, okay? That's where kind of looking at a digital scope versus the analog scopes with storage, they're not, they're, they're not as susceptible to that. But what would happen is, this is a great test to do. You can also do it with a divider tank. You could put a divider tank in between the tube and the, and set it up the same yeah, way and that's what they're butterfly for. the waveform. The good thing about this is, let's say one of your high tension cables is shorted out. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know that. You might think it's a tube arc. If you do this and you see part of this go this side goes down and this side stays rock solid I would look at my cables or I would look at something in one of the windings of the tank okay but if both of them are going down together then it's probably my tube that's arcing that's cool. and I have bad tube so this is a great troubleshooting tool <laughs> if you're trying to figure out a high voltage problem okay also, if your if your candlesticks are arcing, you'll see that you'll see the side that's arcing. Usually, it's the cathode. Okay, cathode will fail more often than anode, simply because you got your filament voltage and so forth going through that as well. All right, it just seems to be that that that's the side that goes. It, it can be the other one, but it's more more often the cathode. So again. Grease your candlesticks, put it back together, redo your test. If you're flat, you know that's all that was wrong. You just needed to re put insulating grease on the high tension cable ends. Okay? Go. Cool. Simple. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. That concludes yeah, we got wrap up. Sorry. this video.